Typically teardrop trailers, especially off-road trailers like this, come in a bit on the heavy side, a bit on the tall side for your garage, even the long side. Well, this trailer today, although off-road, can fit in your garage, even with a rooftop tent, is coming in at 550 to 900 pounds on their base models. And there's two versions of this, a budget version that I think can take most of us wherever we wanna go, and then, you know, one of those models that just has it all. So stick around, as usual, I'm going to share the things I like about this trailer and then kind of the drawbacks from this design and let you think about what style of teardrop might be best for you. So this is Dewdrop Alpha. This is our very off-road capable, very simple uh, alpha grade teardrop trailer. It's very similar to our Dewdrop Standard, which you can see over here. This is the same body, the same size, does a lot of the same job, but it's more of your regular campground camper. It's actually pretty capable of uh, non-highway travel, but it's our highway intended version of the Dewdrop Alpha. So we can talk a lot about what the differences are, but there's also some similarities in that the body inside is identical in many regards. There's some options that are available here that are not available there, but the material, the um, construction, all the inside parts are effectively identical. Just when we get to fitting them out, they get very, very different. This fits right in line with our design ethic almost better than anything because it's ultra simple on purpose. There's very few built-in items or systems on this trailer. It's fully capable, but through um, custom choices that you make. So this is a sleeper, meaning there isn't a galley in the back. Uh, unlike our other trailers that hinge here and have a door that comes up exposing a kitchen, this one doesn't have that. Instead, we have just surfaces. So these fold up just to become a wall, but then when you want both a window to inside for, for better light and a place to set up your stuff, it becomes a work surface. We couple that with, optionally, a set of what I call clip-on kitchenettes. So these are just really simple tables that with pins attached to the wall of the trailer. Everything folds flat. The two tables nest together using the same pins that hold them to the wall. And they stow in the front cargo box or inside of the cabin. It's made out of food safe HDPE, so you can do your meal prep on it. They're waterproof, they're UV stable, they're everything they should be. But they're also simple and small and affordable and light as they should be for a trailer like this as well. This trailer is all about function, but not so much about uh, fancy. It's, it's not fancy at all, but everything is what you, just what you need. You have a place to cook, you have a place to clean up. We have a, a second one of these tables on the other side that also has a, a sink that comes out, um, but is configured as a solid surface, so more prep space. We can outfit them, we use front runner boxes, but when we outfit them for all your uh, flatware and your, and your uh, eating stuff. So it's, it's a, a really simple, quickly deployable and, and fun way of, of having everything that a galley does, but with much less space, much less weight, much less cost. So when I take my family, I take my personal Teradrop Alpha, it fits all of us and all our stuff and our bikes and everything that we want to bring and a big family camp out. But if I'm just gonna go mountain biking or something, I take this one because it's, I don't have to think about anything. It's just simple. It has all the stuff that I need to sleep well and to cook a simple meal and to get out and do whatever it is I'm trying to do out in the woods. It's extremely off-road capable. Um, partly that's because it's narrow. It's a foot narrower than our larger trailers. So this is what we would call a four by seven trailer. The body itself is seven feet long with a six foot six interior bed length. It's four feet wide on the outside, 47 interior width. Very comfortable for one person. Two people fit in nice and snug, but uh, we have many, many couples using them ca uh, happily. So it does work for that as well. We outfit them with you know, whatever you want, but like this one has an exterior 12 volt socket so we can set up a fridge out here and power it. And uh, that's a, as part of your functional kitchen space. Um, they come standard now with the uh, backup lights, um, our stop turn tails are obviously included and the marker lights, everything you need for legal towing. Uh, and then we have fitment options. So this one has a propane tank strapped to the back that you can uh, set up with a two burner stove. 
Um, we have a matching spare put across the back as well as one of the benefits of not having a galley here is we can use that space for other things. Uh, also helps counterweight the tongue weight a little bit, setting a load back behind the axle center. Um, we currently have this one set up with just a, a couple of water systems actually. This is a four gallon uh, uh, pumpable uh, water vessel by Waterport. It's just a quick disconnect for a hose. Um, and we have a seven gallon Yakima similar product on top. Um, this one is great for actually doing a shower because it's a metal tank. They powder coat it with uh, textured black. It absorbs sunlight really efficiently. Um, you can pressurize this one up. It says it's an aluminum tank. You can pressurize it pretty highly up to 65 PSI and it'll come out of this thing just screaming better than your house. Um, if it's been out in the sun for several hours, it gets rather hot. Um, and you won't be getting a hot shower in the morning, <laughs> but it works. Uh, just like everything on this trailer, it works. We have a, a vent set up at the top. Base model comes with a vent only and no electrical package. You can have them as simple as you want. This one has the maximum electrical package that we offer, which has a powered fan and all the same kind of system lighting that we use on the other trailers with the dimmers and the touch capacitive buttons and the light bars and all that. Uh, it has an inverter in it. It has USB outlets and 12 volt outlets and 120 volt outlets, everything you'd want like a full fledged camper. And that's the max iteration. So this one is offered with three flavors of electrical, which first being nothing, just the running lights and a, like a double A battery powered dome light inside, which works, it's fine. And for those who want to keep it razor edge of simplicity, that's the way. But if you want to add a little bit of electrical capacity, we can either step all the way up to what this has, or my favorite is the middle range, which uses a power center like a Jackery or a Goal Zero or equivalent, there's a million products like that now, and it has a home for it in the cabin. Um, and you use the, the outlets on it natively. So you're gonna charge your phone, you plug it right into the USB port on the box. But we take one of the 12 volt output ports from that box, whichever brand you like, and we input it into the trailer. It powers the fan and the lights and all the built-in things. But then you just, again, use natively the output ports from it to supply power to your devices. We can supply the box for you or you can supply it on your own. And we can just do the infrastructure side. And when we do the big electrical package like this trailer has, it utilizes most of this cargo box to get it done. So we have ports on the front, which lead to inside. And inside we have a large battery. This one has a 100 amp hour lithium. Uh, on the front, we have our inputs for solar, for shore, and then output from the inverter. Again, our max coupler, which I think is a, uh, a really simple and effective way to make these very off-road capable. One of, one of the elements that goes a long way towards that end, at least, um, along with the chassis and the suspension and the wheels and the tires and the coating. But these do a great job of making it all feel like one integrated component. The trailer feels like it's part of the car. Um, the other part about this kind of coupler for me that's a massive advantage, unlike a ball coupler, is that there's no guesswork as to whether it's connected properly and is gonna pop off on the road. Um, ball couplers work fine, but if you're not paying attention when you seat them, a lot of times that little cleat ends up on top of the ball, and then the first set of railroad tracks you go over, the trailer ends up on the ground. We outfit them with our, what we call cargo curtains, um, optionally, but I think it's a really great option. It's a way to provide blackout shade, uh, also some extra storage, and they modularly just pop straight off if you want full access to the window and want to use this in another way. Our surfaces here that work for meal prep, or really anything, also provide coverage for the window so that when you're dragging this through brush, it doesn't scrape up the window surface. Um, but we also put a little tension knob here so that if you want some light to get in, but also privacy, you can, you can kind of set this wherever you like. You can see on this, one, on this trailer, we're using our shorter version of our custom roof rack towers. That's because this trailer is shorter on purpose. It is, it'll fit in your garage even with a rooftop tent on top. Um, and we, we take lengths to uh, make this trailer as small of an envelope as it can be, both so that it fits on the trail and in as many places as possible, but also just in your home. It's, it doesn't take up the space that a larger unit does. We use these uh, 
particular Max Air fans because they don't open clamshell style. They have an internal butterfly vent, which means it's always that same height on the outside so that we can put a little basket on top and maintain the amount of clearance we need, but not uh, restrict the airflow to get it done. This trailer is also fitted across the roof rack as we're looking at it. We have the road shower, a cargo basket, and then a um, batwing style awning. Works great with this kind of trailer that doesn't have a galley because as this thing pivots from its back corner, it's able to go all the way across the back of the trailer and not run into the galley lid like a normal teardrop trailer. We have our chassis built specific for this trailer using the same kind of gusset design that we use for our larger uh, units which just provides maximum strength with minimum weight. And then we really like using the Timberon Axilis trailing arm suspension. This particular unit is outfitted with a 2,200 pound springs. There's dual spring compression here, rebound there, but 3,500 pound hardware encompassing it. So it's very heavy duty for a lightweight trailer like this. It, you might consider it overkill, but given the abuse it's intended for, it's, it's the right way to do it. And we find that derating the spring side, but upgrading the hardware side is the right answer for this kind of usage. It, it, it holds up. We like using these double brake fenders uh, when we use the bigger wheels and tires like this particular unit has. This has our Teradrop Alpha um, size wheel and tire, which is effectively a 32. And to give that proper clearance, we have these custom dual brake 45-45 fenders or heavy gauge 14 uh, gauge steel that is powder coated and then alpha coated. Very durable, it's not gonna chip and rust. Uh, they're bolted through with four bolts so you can actually stand on them. It already has ridiculous amounts of ground clearance. Amazing approach and departure angles. Every, everything that you need, you get at this level. What is the clearance on this about? Depending on how you outfit it, it can vary, but I think on this one it's like 20 inches, maybe 22. And then on your stock model, what's that one? Uh, about 18, nice. yeah. Which is still plenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you don't, have all the, uh, any, we always use independent suspension. Even when it's not these trailing arms, even when it's just a torsion cartridge, it's fully independent, no center beam. All of that structure is built into the chassis. It just makes it so you're less likely to jam it up against debris on the, on the trail. So this is the inside of Dewdrop Alpha. Right now it's set up in cargo mode. You can see it's, it's been used. Uh, we like to strap down your cooler, your camp kitchen, all, wh whatever your accessories are, strap into place using that same cargo management system that we use in any of our models. So it's a heavy rubber floor, um, E-track around the perimeter, any kind of accessories you wanna add to that E-track to tie your cargo down. When you get to camp, first thing you do is you pull that stuff out, slide the bed back and you're ready ready for sleeping. Um, the inside of these is very, very simple. Um, there isn't a big set of cabinets in the way, which makes it feel very open and allows us to use these large in, uh, teardrop shaped windows, making it feel very much like outside, even from inside. This one has a little work shelf that can clap, uh, unclamp from the uh, from that surface if you don't want it there but um, I always travel with one of these in here for the easiest and simplest way to sit up in the cabin and you don't need a futon or complex mechanism you get a little recline if you put it on the bed if you slide the bed back and just have it on the floor now it's stable this is uh, one of the trailers that you pack with just simple duffel bags. Things come to, uh, onto here, and then we have, uh, the new ones have little D-rings in nine places on the shelf as well. This is a little bit older model. Duplex outlet on the back, and you'll notice there's a little oval hole there. That way, if you use an electric blanket, the cord can come up through the corner and not have to trail around the front of the shelf. In the front, we have a little locking cubby that comes standard. Um, nice place to keep your wallet or any incidentals that you don't want ready access to, even if someone, even if you leave the door open. Um, on the other side, we have a little storage cargo net that we vacuum form. I like to keep a first aid kit in there. Electrical panel is up here. And so we have just simple light uh, or switches for all of the um, sockets and plugs and things. And same touch capacitive dimmer that we use on our other trailers so that you can dim out or fully bring up. Uh, the light bar which is placed behind your head and above the shelf. So it's not shining in the eyes, it's very diffuse, it's 
great as a reading light. So this is Dewdrop Standard. Um, this is the simplest, lightest, most affordable thing that we make. Um, this one, as it sits, is about 650 pounds. They can be had as light as 550 pounds. Um, starting price currently on this is $8,500. Um, they can outfit to at least double that if you want everything. That's really true of all of our trailers. We start our base price as low as we can, as simple as we can, and then allow people to throw whatever options they like at them in a la carte fashion. Um, these are outfitted with simple single brake Jeep fenders. They're still nice 16 gauge steel, heavy duty, powder coated. Um, regular uh, um, radial Trailer tires and wheels are a perfect match for this because they're light and durable. They all come with easy lube Zerk fittings so that you can do easy maintenance. This trailer, unlike our Alpha trailers, is a aluminum bodied exterior. So uh, the inside is the same, but the outside, instead of being sprayed on with that armored finish, is clad with aluminum siding that we get powder coated. So this is a thin sheet of aluminum as is this. There's another piece back here and it all joins with high quality polyurethane sealants and fasteners and trim and covers. It's a very traditional method that many teardrops employ as well as other campers and it works for a long time. It is not seamless in the way that our alpha trailers are seamless because all of those materials have to join via that system that I described but it works for a long time and eventually you will need to service it as you will any camper that is clad in this way, but that's years and years down the line. SAE, it's a 12 volt plug here that we can now activate, giving us our lights and our fan. Uh, we also take an input from our solar uh, plug from the outside, so that if you plug in a panel from the outside, it will charge the jackery or whatever power unit that you prefer while it's in place. We also have it uh, positioned right next to the 120 throughput so that if you have it plugged in from the outside you can charge the uh, power box with its native charger. And then the lights are controlled in the same way. We just don't have any of the extra stuff because all of that is built in to the Jackery itself or the power center or whatever brand you like. So it's time for those things I really like about this trailer and then some of the drawbacks. This trailer fits in your garage and that's even with a rooftop tent. Do you know how rare that is for an off-road trailer? It's also one to two feet shorter than the typical teardrop trailer and combine that with the removable coupler and this should fit any garage, large or small. The pared down version of this trailer is enough to go anywhere we go. I bet you're liking the alpha version of this trailer and I can see why, but the base model Dewdrop is probably capable enough for most of us. It will go anywhere our tow vehicle can tow this little trailer. National parks, forestry land, BLM, weighing in at only 550 pounds to up to about 700 pounds on the original Dewdrop, and then 900 pounds to 1,350 pounds on the Dewdrop Alpha. This teardrop is for people like you with small tow vehicles and people with limited space. And remember, even though the trailer is smaller than most, the absence of a galley and cabinets means more room inside. Now before we get into the cons, I'm going to have to clarify something because many of you are probably thinking Drew is going to hate this because it doesn't have a galley kitchen. Now that's not actually how I feel about this trailer because this is a trailer I've been looking at for years. Its design philosophy is far from your typical teardrop. It's for minimalists, like May and me back in our 20s. We were avid backpackers and backcountry skiers just looking for a gear hauling solution with a comfy bed. In our 20s, we'd gladly trade out a galley for this kind of size and weight savings. Even in my 40s, today I think this would be a great trailer for my solo adventures or my adventures with the boys. This trailer would bring me closer to what I came out to see. It's a return to simplicity with a few of those creature comforts I still prefer. Would I want this for long-term travel? Absolutely not. That is where a traditional teardrop comes in for me. Now onto the cons where I'm usually talking about things I would improve upon. But in this case with this trailer, I think Sawyer and John did an amazing job of just simplifying it, adding the right add-ons, looking at all the little details. So I'm not going to nitpick that. What I'm going to talk about is when you choose a trailer like this, what are going to be the inherent drawbacks? Let's first talk about the absence or lack of the galley. 
This really impacts two things, storage and cooking. We will talk more about storage next, but let's talk cooking first. Remember, no cooking components are built into this trailer, and you now have no instant cover from rain or sun without your galley hatch. This means if you do have to make a quick dinner stop in the rain, you might want to just hunker down and use that backup dry food you brought along. Pulling out awnings and cooking supplies on the side of the trailer, it's not a big deal when conditions are fair, but when it's windy or rainy, you might think twice about cooking and eating next to your trailer. Lack of interior storage and organization. So what this means is you're going to be splitting storage space between your teardrop and your tow vehicle. And don't expect the tongue box to be your solution. If you get the pared down model without the higher end electrical components, you'll have the entire tongue box for use. But if you're anything like most of us, that box will get filled with trailer gear like chocks, leveling blocks, stake removers, rubber mallets, saws, shovels, foldable toilets, you name it. This leaves you only with that interior shelf and the bed of the teardrop. The more you throw into your teardrop, the more you have to remove each time you want to use that bed. So essentially, you're still storing everything in your tow vehicle just like car camping. The more you store in there, the more accessible the bed is to you. But if you did decide to utilize all that teardrop interior space, you'll have more than enough room for not only your camping gear, but also your toys as well. You just will have to move it around throughout the trip. If I owned one of these, I wouldn't necessarily see it as a teardrop trailer. I would see it as a multi-use trailer that has many functions. One day it's my cargo trailer hauling gear across town. The next it's my bed to sleep on in the woods. At this size and weight, I'd be willing to get creative to make the space work. If you're looking for comparable campers that are small and lightweight, check out this playlist here on the left. Don't let your tow vehicle limit what you can do. There's a handful of great small campers out there that will pair well with your small tow vehicle. So as usual, stay safe on the road and we will see you in the next episode.